inspire your audience. Bunker's objectives today are to inspire the audience by appealing to noble motives and challenging the audience to achieve a higher level of beliefs or achievements, to appeal to the audience's needs and emotions using stories, anecdotes, and quotes to add drama, and finally, avoid using notes. The title of Anker's speech is Magic. Please welcome Anker. Good afternoon, my dear Toastmasters and friends. Before I get started with my speech, I have a request of all of you. My request is the following. There are lots of sticky pads that I've distributed across the table, and I would like you to answer this question. Who is your biggest criticizer? <laughs> Please take a note, write it. I don't want you to share it just right away. Or if you have a piece of paper, just scribble it on the back. Just keep it with you. And we'll get back to that in a few minutes. Let me know when you're ready. speech, Sow Some Seeds. We talked about sowing seeds for ourselves and for our future. These seeds were meant to take us where we never thought we could go. Yet, we would be going a different place by sowing these seeds. It actually left a question with a lot of people saying, why should I sow some seeds? For what exactly? And what am I really going to achieve by sowing these seeds for myself? The answer is actually very simple. We sow these seeds today to take us where we never thought we could go, but where we absolutely ought to be. Where we absolutely ought to be? Where do I as a person ought to be? They say, the world is an oyster. The oyster is kind of yay big. They say the sky is the limit. But no matter what, I can't fly. They say aim for the moon, and if you miss, you'll hit the stars. Yeah, I don't really dig the idea of running into a star. I'm gonna get cooked along the way. Beyond all of these phrases, the answer to the question where each of us ought to be comes up with just a little amount of introspection. Let me talk about a personal story. About three years back, I volunteered to give a presentation to the process group about mineral processing. I was at that time one of maybe five people in the company who knew what mineral processing meant. Yet, I was nervous as never before. Sarah, I believe you were sitting next to me at that time. Did you hear my teeth chattering? My hands shivering? I had my food in front of me and I couldn't put a fork through my food to eat it. I had to wait 45 minutes for my turn for this presentation and all the time worried that the people sitting next to me would smell me stinking because I was sweating out of nervousness. Those were some of the most torturous 45 minutes of my life. At the end of the presentation, I thought to myself, this is ridiculous. I can't get nervous in talking in front of an audience if I want to lead any kind of team in the future. Just imagine if I got nervous talking to my wife and she, I tell her, hey honey, <laughs> can I make some dinner today, <laughs> please? <laughs> I planted two seeds that time. The first was with Katie's efforts in the EDC. And the second was, the, was with the efforts of so many people in this room in Toastmasters. I brought the question, where I ought to be? I ought to be right here, right now, giving the speech to all of you. Very frequently, we come across situations in our life where we feel that this is impossible to do. I cannot do this no matter what. And that's where I go with our second example for the day. Does anybody recognize this guy? How about in this picture? Australian Jersey. Pretty good ink. 
This, my friends, is Riley Bat. I'll let you look at this picture for a couple of minutes. Riley was born without legs. When he was born, the doctors had to cut his hand apart so he could use his fingers. Riley is wearing an Australian t-shirt because he is a member of Australia's wheelchair rugby squad. Wheelchair rugby involves taking a ball the size of a volleyball across a court the size of a basketball court to score points. Riley is considered one of the best players of wheelchair rugby in the world. 12 years back, in the Seoul Olympics, Riley was instrumental in Australia winning a silver medal. Four years back, they won gold at the London Olympics. And this picture is actually from the London Olympics. That happens once in a while. And he was considered the best player of the tournament for this year's 2016 Paralympics for wheelchair rugby. And they won gold again. When he was young, he preferred moving around on a skateboard. Because that's what all the cool kids did. If anybody said, maybe you should try a wheelchair, he said, that's for disabled people, not for me. So one fourth full night, he saw somebody practicing wheelchair rugby at his college, and he was hooked. Today, Riley is 27 years old. He was 19 when he won that silver medal. He didn't let anybody tell him there was something he couldn't do. He does water sports, chops wood, more than anything else, he drives his own car. Riley Bat. You must be thinking, well, let me let me go back to that picture really quick. Where do you think Riley ought to be? Right there on that court doing what he loves so much and showing the world what can be possible. It will bring, bring us to the question where you and I ought to be. And truly, there is one word that will help us get to that point. That word is passion. What are we passionate about? What do we absolutely love doing? What do we enjoy so much? If we can take our passion to where we ought to be, poof, magic. There are so many things we can be passionate about. We can be passionate about cooking, baking, hiking, running, leading, inspiring. There are so many things. The true question is, what are we passionate about? And how can we take our passion to where we ought to be to make this magic? We can also be passionate about doing things on a whim. My question to all of you is, what are you passionate about? Tell me. Please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> My dogs. She loves your dogs. You're probably passionate about biking. You're probably passionate about baking. You're passionate about hiking crazy places. <laughs> Gary, I'm pointing at you. <laughs> what else? Gardening. Gardening. Yet, you're passionate about so many things. There is one thing that's going to stop us. There is something that will absolutely do its very best to stop us. And that is what you wrote down initially at the start of this presentation. Who is your biggest criticizer? I'll tell you before you, I'm not asking you for answers, but before you have sold your spouse or your BFFs or your teachers or whoever it is, 
I'll tell you the answer to that question. The answer to that question is, oops, sorry, going in the wrong direction. The answer to the question is, actually, you. You are the person who will be stopping yourself from doing any of the crazy things that you want to do. So right now, you don't have the influence of all those criticizers that you thought you had. And we're going to do something on a whim. What we're going to do is all of us are going to run around this room. Just because we can. Who's ready? Let's go. Let's run around this room. Please be careful. Put the chairs back inside when you're done. Let's go. Here we go. Let's go. Oh, I'm going to get the green. Let's run. Let's go. Push those chairs in along the way. Here we go. Please plant some Make sure you get back to your own spot. Oh, one round's enough. Just for today. We'll do more later on. My friends, when we mix passion with where we ought to be, we can create magic. How many of us enjoyed that little one round around the room? Simple as that. We can do that to create a better world, to create a place where we actually enjoy every moment of our lives. We can make a thriving office, we can make a wonderful home, we can make a wonderful planet. It all starts with answering two questions every day, every morning. What am I passionate about? And where can I take my passion and make it magic? Thank you.